Chapter 8, Lesson 3, The Solar System How do we observe objects in space? Until January 7, 1610, people observed the night sky using only their eyes. On that date, an Italian astronomer named Galileo Galilei looked at the sky through a telescope for the first time. A telescope is an instrument that makes distant objects seem larger and nearer. Optical Telescopes Galileo used an optical telescope, which uses lenses or mirrors, to see objects by gathering visible light. Among the objects Galileo saw were four moons revolving around the planet Jupiter. At that time, most people believed that all of the objects in the solar system revolved around Earth. Looking through an optical telescope makes a dim object such as a star seem brighter. It can also make objects appear larger so more details can be seen. When the diameter of the light gathering lens or mirror is increased, more light is gathered and planets appear larger. Today's optical telescopes have lenses and mirrors many times larger than those of Galileo's telescope. Modern optical telescopes can magnify images of more distant planets and look farther into space. However, observers on Earth have to look into space through Earth's atmosphere. As you learn, the air in Earth's atmosphere has different densities. As light from distant stars travels through the air, the changes in density make the faint light of stars appear fuzzy. Telescopes in Space In 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope was placed into orbit around Earth. Objects that are billions of trillions of kilometers from Earth can be seen through the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble Space Telescope was named after astronomer Edwin Powell Hubble, who studied galaxies. Placing telescopes in space allows scientists to see into space while avoiding Earth's atmosphere. The Hubble Space Telescope and other space telescopes gather more than visible light from objects in space. For example, they can detect the heat that is given off by a star. Radio Telescopes Back on Earth, radio telescopes record data from radio waves given off by objects in space. Groups, or arrays, of dishes focus the radio waves so the radio data can be recorded. Computers then turn the data into an image. Radio waves can pass through Earth's atmosphere without interference. What are planets? A solar system is a star and the objects that orbit around it. In our solar system, there are eight planets orbiting the sun. A planet is a large object that orbits a star. From nearest to farthest from the sun, the planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The planets travel in elliptical, nearly circular orbits around the, Earth, the sun. The inner planets are closer to the sun than the asteroid belt and have surfaces made of rock. These planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. The outer planets are beyond the asteroid belt and have surfaces made of gases. These planets are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Pluto was once known as the ninth planet. Pluto's elongated orbit and small size were different from other planets. Because of this, scientists debated whether Pluto should be classified as a planet. In August 2006, the International Astronomical Union officially reclassified Pluto as a dwarf planet. Other dwarf planets include Ceres, which is found in the asteroid belt, and 2003 UB313, which is larger than Pluto and even farther from the Sun. How do the planets compare? Each planet has unique features. By studying these features, you can learn more about the differences in the surfaces and atmospheres of the planets. Jupiter's Great Red Spot The Great Red Spot is a huge storm that has been blowing continuously for over 400 years. Its winds can reach speeds of about 435 kilometers per hour or 270 miles per hour. This storm has a diameter of 24,800 kilometers or 15,400 miles which is almost twice the diameter of Earth. Scientists believe that a combination of sulfur and phosphorus in the atmosphere gives this storm its color. Saturn's rings. Saturn's rings were first observed by Galileo in 1610. 
The rings are made of pieces of ice and rock. Some of these pieces are as small as a grain of sand, which others are as large as a, while others are as large as a house. Scientists think that the rings may be pieces of comets, asteroids, or moons that broke apart near Saturn and were pulled into orbit around it. Until 1977, scientists thought Saturn was the only planet with rings. As scientists observed the outer planets, they also found faint rings around Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune. Venus's surface. The surface of Venus shows evidence of violent volcanic activity in the past. Venus has shield and composite volcanoes similar to those found on Earth. Long rivers of lava have been seen on Venus. Mars's rocks. These dark boulders are volcanic rock fragments that have been found on Mars. These rocks look similar to rocks found near lava flows on Earth. On Earth, these types of rocks only form in the presence of water. How do the moons compare? A moon is a natural object that orbits a planet. Different planets have different numbers and sizes of moons. The inner planets have fewer moons than the outer planets. Mercury and Venus do not have moons. Earth has one moon and Mars has two. With at least 63 moons, Jupiter has the most moons of any planet in the solar system. Saturn has 47 moons. Astronomers have discovered 27 moons around Uranus and 13 moons orbiting Neptune. As astronomers observe the outer planets with better telescopes and with space probes, they continue to find more moons. Moons are also called satellites. A satellite is an object in space that circles around another object. While moons are natural satellites, people also put objects into space that orbit Earth or other planets. These objects are called artificial satellites. They include weather and communication satellites and space probes that orbit planets to observe their surfaces. The size of the moons in the solar system varies. Some of the moons are only a few kilometers wide. Jupiter's Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. Ganymede is larger in diameter than Pluto and Mercury. Earth's moon is also larger than Pluto and is visible without a telescope. Ganymede is the only other moon that may be seen without a telescope. Forming craters. Sometimes small objects in space collide with large objects. When this happens, the impact often forms a crater or a bowl-shaped hole on the large object. Many moons have craters on their surfaces. Craters vary in size because the objects that hit a moon are different sizes and travel at different speeds. On Earth's moon, the impact of an object knocks the surface materials away, so the rock underneath is exposed. The surface material piles around the edges of the crater. This makes the moon's craters distinct and easy to see from Earth. Ganymede's surface is made of ice and rock. The dark rock is about 4 billion years old. The light-colored rock is somewhat younger. Craters are seen on both types of rock which means that objects have been hitting Ganymede for at least 4 billion years. Unlike those on the moon, craters on Ganymede are flat. This may be because flowing ice on Ganymede's surface smooths out their edges. Deimos, Mars's largest moon, is composed of carbon-rich rock and ice. Deimos's surface has craters that have been partially filled in by loose rock. What are asteroids, comets, and meteors? Different types of small objects are present in space. These objects include comets, asteroids, and meteors. Comets. A comet is a mixture of frozen gases, ice, dust, and rock that moves in an elliptical orbit around the sun. Comets are thought to be bits of material left over from the formation of the solar system about 4.6 billion years ago. When a comet is farther away from the sun, the gases and ice in the comet are frozen. As the comet moves toward the sun, the core of the comet, or the nucleus, warms up. Some of the ice and dust in the core form a cloud, or coma, around the nucleus. Together, the nucleus and coma make up the head of the comet. As the comet gets closer to the sun, radiation from the sun pushes some of the coma away from the comet. 
This material forms a glowing tail that may stretch millions of kilometers behind the head. Sometimes two tails will form. One tail is made of ice and one is made of gases. Heat energy moves out from the sun in every direction. As a comet moves around the sun, the head stays closest to the sun and the tail trails out behind it. No matter where the comet is in its path around the sun, the comet's tail will always point away from the sun. Comets orbit around the sun, but the amount of time that their orbits take is different. Halley's Comet was the first comet whose return was predicted. It gets close to Earth about every 76 years. Most recently in 1986. The next time it will be near Earth is in 2061. Asteroids. An asteroid is a rock that revolves around the sun. Most of the thousands of asteroids in the solar system are located between Mars and Jupiter in the asteroid belt. Many asteroids have irregular shapes and look like potatoes. Some asteroids are less than 2 kilometers or 1 mile wide, while others can be up to 800 kilometers or 500 miles wide. Meteors. The solar system is full of other small objects. In space, these objects are called meteoroids. If an object crosses paths with Earth and enters Earth's atmosphere, it is called a meteor. Most meteors burn up before they reach the ground. When a meteor lands on the ground, it is called a meteorite. How do we explore the solar system? Exploration of other worlds started in 1959 when a Soviet rocket carrying scientific instruments landed on the moon. Since then, we have sent space probes to orbit and land on all of the planets in the solar system. A space probe is a vehicle carrying instruments that is sent from Earth to explore an object in space. The first space probe to visit a planet arrived at Venus in 1965. In 1969, the United States sent the first astronauts to the moon. An astronaut is a person who travels in a space vehicle. The moon is the only place in space that astronauts have explored. In 2004, two small robot cars, or rovers, landed on Mars. The rovers, named Spirit and Opportunity, drove over the Martian surface. Cameras took pictures of soil, pebbles, and rocks. Instruments aboard the rovers examined the Martian surface and found evidence that liquid water may once have existed on Mars. As far as we know, liquid water is required to support life. NASA is planning a mission to use rovers to collect Martian soil and bring it back to Earth. NASA may also use airplanes and balloons to study the atmosphere on Mars. Other space probes have observed comets and asteroids. The New Horizons space probe launched in January 2006 and should reach the dwarf planet Pluto in 2015. This space probe will analyze Pluto's surface, geology, and atmosphere. Another space probe called Dawn will explore Ceres.